Hi ladies, it's Dr. Ridge here. And today I wanna to talk to you about something that nobody wants to talk about, but that I get questions about all the time from women from age 12 to 102, and that is vaginal discharge. I remember a few years back, I was watching Amy Schumer's comedy special, and she talked about how her New Year's resolution was to just once take off a pair of underwear and have it not look like she blew her nose in it. And of course, my first reaction was, that is hilarious, I love her. Um, but my second reaction was, I wish every woman could see this and know that that is completely normal. Everybody has discharge. That discharge can be more or less for different women and it will def definitely change at different points in their life and different points in their menstrual cycle. Discharge tends to get a little more heavy and mucus-like around ovulation and a little bit thicker around the menstrual cycle. And it can also change with changes in diet and exercise and a lot of different factors. It is normal to have a little bit of discharge that comes off on the underwear and when you're wiping, and that can look like different things. So it can be white, it can be clear, sometimes a little bit yellow or gray tinged. We start to worry a little bit more about discharge if it's more like green tinged or brown or pink tinged, and we'll talk a little bit about what some of those things can be. The consistency of discharge can also change at different parts of the cycle. So sometimes it can be watery, sometimes a little bit thicker, um, sometimes even mucus-like, and all of that can be normal. Again, we tend to worry a little bit more about discharge if it's either kind of thick and chunky, or if it has um, other changes in the, the texture and color and odor. Definitely, if it's causing irritation or bothersome to you, it's a good idea to have it evaluated by a gynecologist. So what are some things that would make us a little bit more worried about discharge and think that it might be something that's abnormal? And there are a few different kind of categories that we worry about with discharge. The first, of course, is infection, and that's what most women think about. And in general, like I said, having discharge in general does not mean infection, but there are a few different types of common infections. First, there are the infections that are typical routine vaginal infections that are very common and are not sexually transmitted. This can be things like a yeast infection, which typically we would think of like a thick kind of cottage cheese, like white, sometimes even green tinge sort of discharge. And that usually causes itching and irritation that can be both internally in the vagina and externally on the labia. And most women are familiar with that. That type of discharge can usually be treated by over-the-counter methods, typically creams or suppositories that you take for one or a few days. Um, but if they're recurrent, you would want to see a gynecologist for other treatment options. The second very common type is bacterial vaginosis. And what this is, is when normal bacteria that lives in the vagina, because everybody has bacteria and some yeast and different things in the vagina, but when one of the normal strains of bacteria kind of overruns the others, then that can cause an infection called bacterial vaginosis. It's very common here in South Florida where it's hot and humid and people are sweating, um, but it can be common in other places as well in women of all ages. Bacterial vaginosis usually looks like a thin, watery discharge that's more profuse and typically has like a fishy type odor to it. It can be irritating, but sometimes there can be no symptoms other than the discharge and the odor itself. And usually we would treat this with antibiotics. Most often a antibiotic that goes in through the vagina, but sometimes oral antibiotics as well. For both the yeast and bacterial vaginosis, taking a probiotic can help to um, decrease the, the risk of recurrence of that, so something to think about. Then other types of infection that can cause discharge are sexually transmitted infections. Most commonly, this would be things like chlamydia, gonorrhea, and trichomonas. And these can cause discharge that can be watery and profuse or can be kind of a little bit thicker, more mucus-like, more green, sometimes with irritation. But sometimes a woman might have these infections and not have any changes in the discharge at all. So that's why routine screening is important and treatment of those infections is important to prevent them from um, ascending higher into the cervix and uterus and causing a deeper infection.
Now, the next thing that people worry about with abnormal discharge is cancer or precancerous lesions. And typically this isn't really the first presenting symptom of it, but some things may make us concerned or at least want to rule out precancerous and cancerous lesions of the cervix, of the uterus, and sometimes of the fallopian tubes and ovaries. So a couple of different things that we look for here. The biggest thing is blood in the discharge, and this will typically mean brownish or pink tinge discharge or spotting that's happening Happening not during the menstrual cycle. And for that, we want to do a little bit more evaluation, both of the cervix and sometimes of the uterine lining, depending on what that pattern looks like and the person's age. The other is a more profuse watery discharge, not too unlike what we were talking about with bacterial vaginosis, but with a different type of odor and with those infections ruled out. And that can make us more worried about um, cancers higher up in the reproductive tract, particularly in the fallopian tubes and the ovaries. The last thing that we think about is when the discharge isn't really actually discharge itself. So sometimes when there's watery things that are coming on the urine or on the underwear or on the pad, it may not be discharge itself. It may be leakage of urine or leakage of stool. And there are different evaluations we can do to test that. For women who have had surgery in the pelvis or radiation or other um, infectious processes in the pelvis, sometimes there can be connections that develop between um, the different organs like the bladder and the bowels in the vagina or the pelvic cavity itself. And occasionally that can cause things like stool and urine to connect into the vagina and leak through that area too. And that would definitely require more evaluation by a gynecologist. So if there's any concern about stool in the vagina or whether it's urine that's leaking or discharge, that should also be evaluated by a gynecologist, um, preferably a urogynecologist. So now that you know a little bit more about discharge and what's normal and what's not, I hope that this gives you some reassurance. Again, if your discharge is not causing bothersome symptoms and it is just fluctuating at different times of the month without irritation or without bleeding or without significant odor, then there's nothing to worry about and nothing to do about it. But if you have any of those other features where the discharge is getting too heavy or profuse or causing itching or irritation or pain, if it's causing a lot of odor or if there seems to be blood or stool in the discharge, then we would definitely want you to see a gynecologist for further evaluation. If you're in the South Florida area, you can give us a call or visit our website for the Florida Center for Urogynecology. Music